In this video, we're going to focus on evaluating definite integrals using u substitution. So let's start with this example. Let's say if we want to find the value of the definite integral of 2x, x squared plus 4, raised to the second power from 0 to 2. So first, we need to integrate the function using u substitution. So we're going to make u equal to x squared plus 4, so that du is 2x, which can get rid of the 2x in the front. Now du is going to be 2x times dx, and we need to divide both sides by 2x to isolate dx. So let's replace u, or x squared plus 4, with u, and let's replace dx with du over 2x. So this is going to be u to the second power and du over 2x. Now as soon as you get rid of all of the x variables and replace it with u variables, you need to adjust the lower limits and the upper limits using this expression. So what is u when x is 0? So let's plug in 0. 0 squared plus 4 is 4. So the lower limit is 4. Now the upper limit as an x value is 2. What is it as a u value? So 2 squared plus 4, that's 4 plus 4, so this is going to be 8. So now we can evaluate u squared from 4 to 8. The antiderivative of u squared is going to be u to the third over 3, evaluated from 4 to 8. So if we plug in 8, it's going to be 8 to the third over 3, and then minus 4 to the third over 3 when we plug in 4. So now what is 8 cubed? So that's 8 times 8 times 8, which is 512. 4 to the third power is 64. And 512 minus 64 is 448, which is not divisible by 3. So this is the final answer. 448 over 3. And so that's how you can evaluate definite integrals using u substitution. As soon as you change the variables from x to u, make sure to change the value of the lower limit and the upper limit from x values to their corresponding u values. Here's another problem that you could try. Go ahead and evaluate this particular definite integral using u substitution. So we're going to set u equal to this expression because x squared is higher than x. Now, if u is equal to 16 minus x squared, what is du? The derivative of 16 is 0, and the derivative of negative x squared is negative 2x. And now let's solve for dx. So let's divide by negative 2x. So dx is equal to du divided by negative 2x. And now at this point, let's replace 16 minus x squared with the u variable. And let's replace dx with du over negative 2x. So this is going to be 4x times the square root of u, and then du divided by negative 2x. So 4x divided by negative 2x, that's going to be negative 2. And now we need to change these values. So let's plug it into this expression. So when x is 0, what is the value of u? That's 16 minus 0 squared, and so this is going to be 16. Now, when x is 4, what is u? 16 minus 4 squared, that's 16 minus 16. That's going to be 0. And the square root of u is u to the 1 half. So now we don't need this anymore right now. Now, what is the antiderivative of u raised to the 1 half? So 1 half plus 1. That's 3 over 2, and 
Instead of dividing by 3 over 2, we're going to multiply it by the reciprocal 2 over 3. And we still have a negative 2 in front. And let's evaluate this from 16 to 0. So negative 2 times 2 thirds, that's negative 4 thirds. So if we plug in 0, it's going to be negative 4 over 3 times 0 to the 3 halves. And then minus negative 4 over 3 times 16 raised to the 3 over 2. So 0 raised to anything is just 0. And here we have two negative signs, so that's going to become positive. So we have positive 4 over 3 times 16 raised to the 3 over 2. Now what is 16 raised to the 1.5 or 3 over 2? How can we evaluate this rational exponent? This is the same as 16 raised to the 1 half raised to the 3. When you raise one exponent to another, you need to multiply it. 16 to the 1 half is the same as the square root of 16, which we know to be 4. And 4 to the third is 64. So we now have 4 over 3 times 64. And 4 times 64, 4 times 60 is 240, because 4 times 6 is 24. 4 times 4 is 16. So 240 plus 16 is 256. And therefore, this is the final answer for this example. It's 256 divided by 3. Let's work on one more example. Evaluate the definite integral from 1 to 2 of 2x, 1 plus x squared raised to the third power dx. Now, we need to make u equal to 1 plus x squared because du, the derivative of 1 plus x squared, is going to be 2x times dx, and so we could cancel the 2x on top. So now let's solve for dx. Let's divide both sides by 2x. So dx is equal to du over 2x. Now let's replace 1 plus x squared with u, and let's replace dx with du over 2x. So this is going to be 2x divided by u to the third, and dx is du over 2x. And so we could cancel 2x. And don't forget, we need to change the limits of integration. So what is u when x is 1? It's going to be 1 plus 1 squared, which is 2. Now what is the value of u when x is 2? So it's 1 plus 2 squared, or 1 plus 4, which is 5. So we need to integrate 1 over u to the third from 2 to 5. So first, let's rewrite this expression. Let's bring the u variable to the top. So it's going to be u to the negative 3. And now the antiderivative of u to the negative 3, that's going to be negative 3 plus 1, that's negative 2, divided by negative 2, evaluated from 2 to 5. Now let's rewrite it. So this is negative 1 divided by 2u squared from 2 to 5. And now let's plug in the upper limit. So it's negative 1 over 2 times 5 squared and then minus negative 1 over 2 times the lower limit, 2 squared. Five squared is 25. And these two negative signs will change into a positive sign. Two squared is four. Now, two times 25, that's 50. And two times four is eight. But I'm gonna rewrite it as one over eight minus one over 50. So we need to get common denominators. What number goes into, what number is divisible by eight and 50? The only thing I can think of is 200. 8 doesn't go into 100, 
but 8 goes into 200 because 8 goes into 40 and 40 goes into 200. So to get 50 to 200, we need to multiply the top and bottom by 4. 200 divided by 8 is 25. So the first fraction, we need to multiply the top and bottom by 25. So this is going to be 25 over 200 minus 4 over 200. And 25 minus 4 is 21. So the final answer is 21 divided by 200.